Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokona Man at YouTube with a, another Honing Your Airbrush Skills video where we vlog about our monthly or bi-monthly airbrush work with a few big projects out of the way and just some stint um, repair work. I've uh, pulled all my rigs out and wanting to have everything clean to use as I uh, please. Now I'm um, down to the Sparmax DH103 barely working and I've done a little work on the AirTech which is like a um, uh, Sterner and Hardback um, but it comes from Japan beautiful aluminium airbrush gonna clean them all out um, some of them that I've only used once or twice and never maintained it properly for uh, review sake and just get them all working change needles nozzles what, whatever needs to happen and we'll cover uh, bits and pieces uh, of that here and um, probably do a line from uh, each airbrush as uh, an interesting thing. I've also got visiting from uh, the Mecca Workshop, also one of mine, uh, a Sparmax Max 3. I'll be doing a side video, doing a full clean and review of this particular model. And... Um, demonstrate um, its uses compared to uh, the Sparmax DH103 which is the grandfather of this model. Uh, it's an excellent airbrush I uh, definitely highly recommend it. The reason why some of these are um, roughed is because I attended uh, Anamunga. I brought a lot of my airbrushes and taught people and allowed them to use it and uh, with people using it they do and make some mistakes and have paint traveling and doing all sorts of things they get the confidence and they want to airbrush themselves and that's the whole point of uh, my works here so it's no extra heartache of uh, doing a good cleaning job and uh, covering it for you guys so all of his work will be done um, in a separate video but I will review him with all the others now just a quick uh, rundown uh, this is my Sparmax DH103 original airbrush. Used to have two, sold one. But this is the one um, that I got as a gift from um, my uh, mother on my 18th birthday. And it's uh, served very, very well. I don't know what happened to the cap, so I'm going to have to look for that. This is a Heising. DH-103, exactly the same, except for the internals are ever so slightly different. Uses the exact same consumable parts and works just as well, um, especially if you maintain it nicely. I just choose to use this because it's just a little more smoother to use. This is an AirTech 0.2mm airbrush. It's been lubricated with uh, cooking oil. Um, this is an airbrush you do not put in an ultrasonic cleaner, even though it has uh, Teflon parts. This is the best airbrush I've ever used. It's very easy to clean just by scrubbing um, parts and it just flushes or self-flushes itself very, very easily. If you can't find an air um, tech, a uh, stern and uh, or a um, stern and hardback airbrush would be just as appropriate. Um, they've all got the same in a blue bit like this, maybe a different colour and every other bit the cup, the back, the solenoid the trigger, the tip of it is all different and you can buy different parts and actually customise your airbrush for whatever uses you find absolutely appropriate so that's absolutely amazing and this is our last one a Spa Mac, uh, sorry, a um, Heising as well exactly the same as this one except it has a larger uh, nozzle if I remember correctly it's a 0.5 and it's got a massive uh, reservoir for paint so it can do some large um, surfaces I uh, didn't have much luck with this so I'm going to clean it and try using it again so I'm going to be doing a project with a friend on this car and some cosplay props and whatnot so getting this working will be pretty ideal also, I posted my last um, Honing Your Airbrush Skills video, not the best video, um, around on Facebook. And there was uh, some criticism given on the um, Scale Modeling Critique group. Uh, I did get a bit of out of hand, so I didn't uh, respond to them there, so I happily respond to them uh, here. Uh, this is a very long uh, going series of uh, video um, 
the ultrasonic cleaner going in the background uh, was a bit annoying and I'll uh, tend not to do that again in future but uh, the concept is we use fairly cheap uh, airbrushes I found some of the um, uh, washes not too needed for my style of low um, PSI airbrushing so I'm happy to dump all the parts in the ultrasonic cleaner to get it cleaned uh, the reason why there was so much um, paint running in the back was because uh, other people were using the airbrush learning themselves uh, but the seal just behind the uh, cup has absolutely died I found putting um, a substantial amount of Vaseline in there uh, seals it perfectly and I've uh, produced uh, a lot of nice work in um, at least my humble opinion having a look at my Facebook or YouTube channel you can see the output of uh, work that I do put out and I do airbrush quite regularly so I think uh, my style is not for everyone um, using an ultrasonic cleaner is not necessary for all brands of airbrush I would not use it on the AirTech or uh, Sterner and uh, Hardback I would however use it for Sparmax I would use it for um, Hysing and um, it just absolutely works and once uh, the last uh, seal in the back of the paint cup dies and you put in a fair amount of lubricant you can airbrush for many many months until you need to give it a full clean out and this video series is about um, cleaning your airbrush as well as tuning it to the point with all the tools available until um, we can paint some really fine lines and do some interesting work on our models so as not to look like that I'm a coward and running away from an argument or controversy I'm very happy to talk about it on my platform and not really get uh, ganked in a public area though I'm very happy to come back and follow the rules of your group and we'll be publishing the next video and notice if you guys uh, take notice of this uh, little note so uh, no trouble or harm whatsoever so this is the point five and it's very tight it's been neglected for a long time uh, the plastic bit will not go in the thinner but I will give it a lighter wipe out everything's extremely tight as paint was probably left in it and um, then just left for up to six months of uh, no use that's a shame it should be in use so we'll clean it up the um, air solenoid is absolutely fine so that doesn't need to go in the thinner the rest of it can now going on only uh, textured bits you're able to break the seal of uh, paint and metal there we go with that damaging anything too much I don't remember what I used this for last so that's nasty this was never lubricated And it dismantles very, very, very easily. So we've got all the pieces. And as always, lack of thinner. Submerging everything, or half thereof, in the ultrasonic cleaner. And we'll just watch the clouds of uh, primer and dirt and soot and crap just rise. And make the thinner from clean to filthy, I guess. Let that soak for a while and I might strip down another airbrush. While we're waiting. Clean down the needle. Give it a 
nice wipe down until all the colour and resistance from wiping the uh, tissue upwards and forwards down is all gone. Excellent. And we'll just give the uh, cup a bit of a, a clean. I remember this popping up, so we're going to drill a hole. So the next time I jet bubble, I could do it with the lid on. There we go. A nice dirty hole in it. All the pieces came out and a few of the uh, washers have become unlodged. So that's probably what was uh, clogging everything. Mind you, it all came out quite nice and easy. There's a few larger washers or washer debris in here. That would have caused all sorts of problems. So hopefully after um, wiping it down and uh, greasing it up with uh, Vaseline as we usually do, all the threads in the back end, we will have a working airbrush. And we've got it working, absolutely smooth. Pulls back without any issues. We'll run some paint through it. So we've got the... Um, Oh, that's kind of too watery. Needs more PSI. Oh, that's fucked up. That's going to need some work. Alright, so we're fully ready to go. And there we go. Nice and thick lines. And that is at 20 psi. So we need 20 psi. To spray nicely out of our 0.5. Okay, so I'm pretty um, impressed with the 0.5 mil airbrush. These lines are really, really good. Um, same painting um, ratio, 50-50. The same that you'd put into a normal airbrush. The um, compressor output has to be consistent. So you need a tank. You need it about 20 psi. And 20 psi, full tank, full flowing air. That's the Goldilocks zone. That is what this airbrush needs. I did not figure that out last time. This time playing around, absolutely nailed it. So I'm really happy. I need to use this airbrush for some uh, projects sometime in the future. Big projects like that Gunpla Builders World Cup one won't be a problem with dioramas. So I think I have really got something. And you know, some of these fine gradients, the lines look really, really good. So we've got an absolute winner here. She's clean. She's good to go. The next one's very, very similar. It's also a DH103. Um, Heising and it's also been uh, quite neglected but it's in not too bad shape it shouldn't be too hard to clean the 0.5mm airbrush in a much worse state than this uh, did very, very well in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner for only 5 minutes wasn't a long soak at all this one I'll give it a bit of a soak and as always, um, it's good to practice in doing and undoing your airbrush. And I can see a red back spider on my camera, so I'm going to turn it off. I melted that motherfucker in my thinner. Um, so I'm going to fish him out because he's still alive. Fuck it. Squish him, I'll get him out. I don't mind spiders, but I don't want to go to hospital, so fuck him. Good, he's dead. 
I don't have to talk about spiders anymore. We're focusing on airbrush. Oh man, there's so much serious shit in there. But you get the idea of how to pull this apart. So I'm only soaking half the parts because it's just the front end that's giving me a bit of problem. Let that clean nice and well for a little while. When the ultrasonic cleaner is on, I'll probably talk even louder. It's probably more annoying, but meh. Not too fast. Clean the needle. Give this one a really good clean. So obviously the last clean I did it was kind of not too sufficient. I don't know if I mentioned in the last video, if you got a thread around here, it's really hard to undo with your fingers. Though it makes it really easy to clean. You've got the airline in there and the um, paint line. You have to make sure when it goes together it has to go as tight as possible because that's where the two points line up. If you have uh, air problems, it's probably because that's not tight enough. And you just really need to use um, pliers. So it's just as tight back up. Really handy. All the parts are clean. Going to um, use a cotton swab and just lubricate it as I do with all the other airbrushes and we'll do some more lines. So we've got the high seam loaded up. It's beautifully in good nick. This is quite an interesting um, thing of events. I think the nozzle is absolutely split. Because these brass um, nozzles are not as well made as uh, the machine steel ones, they do need to be replaced more often. Since I can easily go six months, three months without a change, with quite heavily used, sometimes up to a year, at about a dollar a nozzle, it's not too bad. So we're going to put the needle back in. There we go, that looks a lot more normal. So hopefully. We're not going to be getting um, the needle going through the whole thing. I'm causing trouble. Flush any oil out. We're fine with the air leak, the blockages, and then we're good. Okay, what's happened is, there is a gasket there. And there's a bit of shattering to the airbrush, which has had that last time. Once uh, dismantling it, what I found is, for this type of airbrush that we have the mechanism that comes off here, there is a gasket that needs to be right here. And it's uh, come loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep putting lubricant and spray, lubricant and spray until it stops shattering. Alright. Not too bad, but could be a lot better 
once I've got a replacement for that gasket inside of there, must have uh, fallen out. Uh, I've got an idea how to fix that, so we might look at that in a future video. Okay. So a day after, had a bit of a think about it. <coughs> We've got significant improvement by putting grease in the um, place where the washer is and consulting some people that work on um, cars and whatnot and mechanics, what they sometimes do is if um, <coughs> a washer or gas gets blown and they need a quick uh, a quick um, repair they would um, apply uh, two-part epoxy glue uh, hopefully it hardens, screw it into place before it uh, fully dries and use that as a temporary fix since we've got good control with um, green stuff and other epoxy uh, thicker putties we'll uh, give that a go so using green stuff I made a tiny band around this point made sure it fits in the airbrush and also made sure the two air holes are somewhat exposed we'll run air through it and if we've got sufficient air pressure coming out without it shuddering or liquid going into the cup uh, I think we've won still bubbling so we'll grease it up and see if we can uh, try to cut it down even further so what I did was I put a little and I'll take it off to show it we put a little too much putty in it and that still shuddered a tiny bit as we saw we'll uh, move the needle to prevent fucking it up and that still shuttered a tiny bit and then I put like way way too much lubricant inside now when I put too much putty in there was no airflow so I would cut the putty away around the edge put it on test, cut away the putty, put on test got enough airflow but it would still shutter on uh, the very very uh, low ends or low PSI uh, so once I put in way too much um, lubricant, closed it, it's sealed, and you can see the excess. Okay, since I've removed it, some of the lubricant came out. We're talking about this much lubricant. I did drop and it did uh, come off. Make sure it sandwiches and squeezes out in a big disgusting pus of ball. Mind you, only do this to the highest things. Don't do this to any other airbrush. Why we do more work on the high thing, working out uh, that washer issue, and I'm sure I can uh, get it down pat. We've got the uh, Sparmax, got it completely uh, dismantled, and as always, all of it straight into cleaner. Now the best thing about the Hi-Sing and the Sparmax, it doesn't have an extra connection here. So that means uh, this and the um, Max will never suffer the problem that I'm having with that one. Uh, separating there may seem like a good idea for easy cleaning, but it appears when that um, washer busts, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Due to how filthy it was, this one had a good soak and clean for about 20 minutes and I found the inside to be absolutely filthy so I used uh, cotton swabs and it took about up to 10 goes to swab the back and each time it came uh, jet black so probably the lubricant's not sticking to the back because of just how much dirt this time it's absolutely thoroughly nicely clean, uh, bare metal and we'll be putting um, the uh, petroleum jelly um, appropriately throughout so rubbing out all the inside the back bits sticking it together I have a brand spanking new needle and nozzle I've noticed it's been spluttering a bit uh, the highest thing seemed to have a tear nozzle this probably also had a torn uh, nozzle and uh, that should be uh, good from there after that we have the uh, AirTech so I'll assemble it and paint a line 
Okay, so we've got very, very smooth action. Um, no issues here. Absolutely love that fact. Spray some paint. All right, some lines with the Sparmax. Seems to be some sort of problem. There we go, I had the wrong head on it. Um, can't be mixing the parts between the high sing and the DH-103. So, we can see that uh, there's a significant improvement with uh, lines and spraying. And there's a lot less uh, spluttering. So we can see that that's a massive improvement. There is a bit of some sort of uh, air clogging, but they're flushing out of uh, thinner a few times, and she should be absolutely beautiful. Found the problem. Not shattering anymore. Barely bubbling in the cup. Uh, what happened was there was a bit of um, tiny bit of grease in the cup, and a tiny bit of grease in the um, actual uh, paint line. So I've. Uh, taken the internals out, scrubbed it out, flushed thinner in it up been times, gonna flush thinner through it one or two more times, and we've got a perfectly working airbrush. Very happy. But with that very th fine line we've just uh, drawn, pretty good. So for the fourth airbrush, we have the AirTech. So we've got um, AirTech Japanese for the artist whatever, airtech.co.jp, beautiful airtech. It's very similar to um, a Stern and Hardback. It's got uh, very similar parts, beautifully cnc uh, polished finish. And the idea is it comes with the base body here and everything else is um, an addition. Now, even though it has Teflon parts and not um, rubber parts, I would not wash this in um, an ultrasonic cleaner. It does come apart really beautifully and really easily, and it's very, very quick to clean. Um, it's, 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 it's just super, super easy and super, super quick to clean. Everything is nice and tight and beautiful, so all I generally do is pull it apart, wipe the parts down, and uh, put it back together. Uh, I don't take, uh, I don't even think that actually does come off. The um, no nit nozzle, which is really interesting, is got this massive, massive thread on it. Here we go. And it's uh, made out of steel as well, so it's going to last for a long time. A friend of mine stuffed the nozzle by putting uh, the incorrect needle in it. Or he bought a Sparmax needle and put it in there and it just absolutely fucked the uh, taper. Needle looks very similar but it's actually generally a bit fatter at the stem and it's got these uh, strange notches on the end. I'm going to order a um, Harback and Stern needle and nozzle to see if it's exactly the same. If not, I have to go directly to the uh, AirTech uh, website and navigate the uh, Japanese. Like uh, other airbrushes, it is probably uh, best to lubricate all the internals. I have already done this with uh, cooking oil. But I'm going to just put in a very, due to its uh, tight fit, a very, very light amount of um, uh, Vaseline. Not much at all. But it comes apart very, very quickly. Um, once uh, apart, it's just simple as a little lacquer thinner. And you just wipe out the internals. Run the needle through the hole. It's nice and big, so gunk can come out quite easily. And just give it a quick uh, wipe down, grease up, put it back together. That's all it needs. 
does not need a soak whatsoever. So I'm not too sure how this airbrush would react with uh, no um, washers. And the Teflon washers are resistant to um, thinner, but um, replacing it would not generally be uh, very, very easy. You can see that uh, just being a part like that, there is uh, no dirt anywhere. It does come apart much like a general airbrush and it is just very 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 clever uh, the handling is absolutely amazing I've never been able to paint such fine lines and have such control with an airbrush both dusting and um, painting as this but because of the amazing control and the hard arm um, to get parts I use it very rarely I did crack it out to paint that Fiat 2000 World War One uh, tank and I achieved a beautiful camouflage due to just how much sheer control I have this this airbrush. So once you've absolutely uh, conquered a Sparmax and you've able to operate it and run it absolutely beautifully without ruining the needle and nozzle for a very long time, then it's time to upgrade to something like this and give it the absolute greatest amount of care. They make sure wherever the source you buy it, and I bought it when it was a trend, um, that you can order parts and just have a backlog of a few parts just in case. And it doesn't hurt to have um, a couple of uh, spa maxes or uh, high sings as backup in case something happens before a competition or whatnot. It's so very gently, as one, this cost me $200. B, I've only got one of each part. It's beautifully lubricated. I only used a tiny amount of lube because everything fits beautifully. And when I uh, worked this with um, no lubricant, there wasn't any leaks or anything. All the lubricant does is protect the Teflon seals and just flows a little better. There should not be any leaks. Uh, opening the instructions, just wanted to show you the genius of this airbrush. Compared to uh, the Hisync, which has the highest parts count, going down to the Sparmax in this, this just really has fuck all parts. I'm only seeing um, two to three very, very important um, O-rings. The air solenoids generally are the same and there's just no breakdown at the front. It's very, very basic. Because of how basic it is, uh, the potential of it going wrong is uh, very, very low. So we've got the AirTech uh, Beauty 4 Plus. Beautiful model. Now, unlike normal airbrushes, I found that the nozzle needs to be on nice and tight, even though it's got a large thread. If it's a bit loose, it's going to shudder and bubble from the top cup. Now, to do our paint test, so we've got our Sparmax that's really well tuned on the side. And we've got just as fine, if not slightly more intense line. So we can see that the evolution, high sing, high sing, three lines next to that, spa max, and then the last lines is the air tech. And you can see how there's just no splatter, it just beautifully just dusts on. And you can just do some really amazing effects. It's king in shading and in doing fine detail. I intend to use it more often so I can um, do camouflage and gradient work. But for priming and base coating, we'll be using the uh, Hisync. Uh, not the Hisync, the Sparmax. I'll uh, get this cleaned out. Now, another really cool thing is because the jar gets emptied out really really quickly and it's uh, awesome chrome slightest amount of uh, thinner and everything just gets wiped away in one pass and it's practically almost clean quarter filled bubble jet 
and maintaining it is just super super quick and you're just virtually emptying that in no time and this cup is like three times bigger than most so spray painting or airbrushing and unloading um, a load is a lot quicker maintenance is a lot quicker mixing paints is a lot quicker fault finding is a lot quicker realistically it's just the superior airbrush and uh, once you move on to this um, maintenance is going to be less of a thing and just occurs when you need to so I'm just giving it another wipe out another flush and it's done absolutely quick a lot of uh, my wiping and flushing is done off camera so I'm having a look in there it's slightly blue and absolutely clear now and that's cleaning out um, an air tech and it's just an absolute beautiful airbrush rest of the video we'll keep experimenting and playing with the 0.3 mil um, air tech until we can get that uh, airbrushing without um, bubbling all the time and uh, just using the Sparmax as normal going back to the high sing and even though this is a, a big part of the video I have uh, built this up for a few days and what I did was I create a tiny band of Milliput putty so I've removed the um, green stuff made a band wrapped around made sure that the little air hole was poked clean lubricated it tested it there was still a leak allowed it to dry did another band of uh, putty the next day created the holes tested it and the flow was so much better today did the third band it's still a bit wet and there is no leaking whatsoever initially when I put the band down and tested it there was no flow as soon as I poked the hole it worked absolutely beautifully I'm going to apply a little bit of um, lubricant so we don't have to sandwich as much as we did last time gently seal her up and I'll demonstrate in the test of how there's no bubbles coming through here now before when I pushed the air down there used to be a ton of air coming out and when it was pulled back slightly there was more air and back there was a mixture of um, doing this and air spraying out and or thinner spraying out but you can see that there is no bubbles coming out so it's absolutely cured and I can do really 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 fine amount of spraying without it actually cutting out or being all splotchy because uh, most of the air was coming out of the cup so even though this, this is a $20 airbrush the fact that we can make o-rings out of putty and just build it up over time is really reassuring if you've got an expensive airbrush like this that has a mechanism there uh, awesome there is not much reason to open it so leave it closed as much as possible even in the ultrasonic cleaner and even with the putty seal I don't know what thinner will do to the putty seal with the uh, lid off and the ultrasonic cleaner it might dissolve off and you'll have to spend another two three days fixing it so I think from now on that little uh, component there will be uh, remain closed as much as possible unless I'm dislodging crap out of it using a tool so um, it's not very convenient it's a bit of pain in the ass if you are buying a Heising airbrush or a cheap eBay airbrush make sure you do not have a band there you should only have two bands here no band here whatsoever and that should uh, save you the heartache if you already have this airbrush this is what you do if you have a more expensive airbrush that has a similar problem that has no o-ring you can't find an o-ring you can't fix it 
you can try this with confidence. If it all goes to shit with a hobby blade, you can carve out the um, putty without damaging the metal. If you do it very, very gently, just carve out one bit and then uh, the whole thing will just disintegrate uh, off. So this is a great repair. I'm very, very happy, very, very successful, very unorthodox. Um, I wouldn't share this with other hobbyists because uh, they'll probably laugh me out of the place um, doing such a strange or weird experiment. But you don't know unless you try and this airbrush will make a lot more uh, wonderful work for my purposes. So doing a quick uh, run there, we have the point, uh, five, which are uh, cleaned up very well. It's almost brand spanking new. And we can see that uh, the lines are very, very soft, not spluttering. Works very well as an airbrush. It's going to be excellent for uh, top coats priming large surfaces. Uh, this is the um, Hysing 0.3 mil that we had the problem. Now before I fixed the gasket, we got uh, these updine lines um, going up to whatever point, I'm not too sure. Now they spray at a higher level, uh, it came out okay, not too uh, worried. Once we replaced the O-ring with uh, putty, it sprayed even better, so that was a uh, pre-putty O-ring. This is uh, the signature um, 0.3 mil, just like the uh, Hyacinth, but you can see that the lines that came out of it is these ones here. Brand Spanking New Airbrush works absolutely wonderful. First time used. A review video. Look out for uh, that. The AirTech Beautiful 0.2 mil. It painted uh, some really, really, really tiny, beautiful, tight lines. That was cleaned up and lubricated. It did get a bit uh, clogged with uh, lubrication in the airline. They got cleaned out and it got. Um, uh, sorted. I also found that there was a bit of a um, airflow problem because you need to do the nozzle really, really tight. Now, normally with the other airbrushes, we do not do a tight nozzle fit because we break the thread. But the thread's quite massive, so uh, a tight fit is absolutely important. We've got the uh, DH103 Sparmax, and that had a bit of some issues. We did some lines, and uh, that came out um, okay. And we've got the Max Free, comparing it on loan to review. And uh, that did some very, very nice lines. So we've done a lot of practice lines. We've cleaned up all the airbrushes. And I think if we were to do one line from each of them, uh, they should do a lot better than what we've uh, displayed here. In conclusion, all of these airbrushes are good. You can see the last two were a lot better due to the performance of a better compressor instead of the small compressor under the counter. It also, uh, how often you change the little nozzles do get um, an improvement. I used to change them regularly and I got a bit lazy. We will uh, change that. I think uh, we'll uh, paint a model and we shall leave this month as is. So I've gotten a bit sick of using those metal trays. Uh, they're a pain to wash, they rust. They're hard to tip, they're not very big. So I'm getting into these uh, shot glasses as for a while. I've been putting paint uh, directly into the airbrush and even though that works about 90% of the time, um, there's always that 10% time that uh, things stuff up. And it's just so much easier to just mix your paints absolutely separately and making sure that they're free of imperfections and you're putting the right amount in. So I've got this uh, very heavily thinned concoction of black, uh, a lot more thin than um, I usually do, as it's going to be uh, used for shading and doing highlights and lowlights on this uh, tank. And I'm able to just pour how much I want out, get a piece of paper. Subject's a bit funny with the airbrush.
As I thought I was on to something good, the ass falls out of the red cups. Obviously the red cups are kind of thin, the plastic's not compatible. I do remember seeing clear, thick plastic shot glasses. We'll try that in future, but we'll not discount this concept. Paper cups may also work too, the ones for um, espresso coffee. This concludes my honing your airbrush skills video 18. I did not expect to go in this uh, direction of uh, cleaning and maintaining all the airbrushes. Uh, the Gunpla Builders World Cup and the collecting things do occur, but I've got everything I own in optimal condition and minimal maintenance will occur in the future. I do have a video coming out um, reviewing the Sparmax Max 3 with compressor and the signature 0.3 mil airbrush that's very similar to uh, the Sparmax uh, DH103 lines and there's already a signature 0.2 mil fine airbrush review out there on this channel. Just a bit of a closing statement. In the spirit of this video, I think it's all about fault finding. I do stress in a lot of the starting of my review airbrush videos that you just got to really know what the ultimate and best performance your airbrush can uh, do and uh, the finest line and just the best it can possibly perform. Once you're comfortable and very aware how that works, then when things go wrong, you don't just get used to the um, fault. I've done that when I was uh, new to airbrushing and when it splattered or did other things, I just assumed that's how it was and tried to paint and work around that. Uh, don't remove the paint and keep working at it until it works back to doing really fine lines and dusting on beautifully without splattering. Always keep a staple of parts aside for immediate replacement and it should not stall any of your works because stalling work sucks when your airbrush just does not work. That all said, be used to the current condition of your airbrush, be used of constant maintenance, be used to drawing lines regularly as practice. Paint as often as you can, build and paint as many models as you humanly can. The more practice, the more comfortable, the more powerful you are at your airbrush and the more likely you'll start doing risky maneuvers such as filters and shading and freehand work. The better you get with the airbrush, the more fun it is with creativity and just doing shades and tone and gradients and just absolutely everything. So every month, Pull apart and reassemble your airbrush. Get an A4 piece of paper. Paint a heap of lines if you're airbrushing or not. And make sure you have a lot of parts on order or on standby. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, until next time, stay tuned for further content, tutorials, reviews, ask questions. Happy to answer them. Got a Facebook account, post regularly updates of our current models, projects, interesting things to share. I've got a Twitch, going to be doing content on that very, very shortly. Still experimenting. Uh, Patreon, only if you're obliged. We'll catch you guys next time. See you later.